praise and glory be to the name of our lord and jesus christ a warm welcome to one and all of you my dear brothers and sisters i also greet you in the matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ as always i feel deeply honored and so should you be that we are here together to meditate from the word of god yesterday when i was in my personal meditation god revealed something to me we always talk through some of the generic uh, matters or generics from the bible and then we get into the uh, actual you know the core content of of this discussion the very reason why we are here is to talk about this core content but we will get in there all of us know that in the uh, mount right the mount and the sermon and uh, you see that you know people were there for 3 days uh, without any food and uh, jesus was overwhelmed in his uh, spirit and then he he felt compassionate in his spirit and he wants to feed those people nobody asked him food interestingly he turned around and he asked um philip why did he ask philip why not other 11 disciples well we will find answers for the question um he asked philip hey philip what do we do about this where do we get food to feed these guys Jesus never spoke about money neither the he quantified saying that you need $500 1000 nothing like that this guy immediately says 200 denarii of rupee or money is not enough to buy this food i always used to wonder why this 200 in number why not 500 why not 199 and uh, one of the scribes did this wonderful study it's no big secret most of you may be knowing this the name of philip means he was the lover of horse and so was his character too he had he was so fond of horse and those days the horses were roughly varying between 190 to 200 and 250 denarii something like that and 200 denarii means it's a one year of wages you know a person's salary and what does it tell us jesus is a prophet he's a son of god he just knew everything Mr Philip the lover of horse actually wanted to buy a horse <laughs> so he started not now actually for a long time that's what the scribes were saying even before he knew Jesus he was in the process of um, gathering up those uh, that denarii 1 2 3 4 5 6 and looks like he had almost like 200 denarii and he was about to buy that horse yep and uh, Jesus you know right very interestingly he catches you at this at the, at the right time right point of time nobody can escape from jesus his timings his calculations are amazing it's beyond human's imagination it's beyond our wisdom god's wisdom is beyond our wisdom we just cannot understand and uh, jesus never said hey take the 200 denarii go and buy <laughs> buy that bread and whatever sauce and for this all people and all that he never said anything where could we buy and immediately understood gone case i have been caught jesus knew for sure that i have money that's why he's catching me this guy himself confessed <laughs> that's the innocence of philip and uh, philip was a very honest man right and he never hid that hid that money for himself and that's why the one of the amazing wonders um was done through philip first the holy spirit caught him by caught him up and he uh, you know from one place to other place he was transported and all this kind of uh, you know miracle the wonders had not been performed before uh, philip and obviously paul the apostle went all the way to third heaven and came that's a different story but uh, that that's another amazing wonder but uh, you know god used him jesus used him a lot and what it tells is like this guy probably had a lot of pride in his heart he thought okay other apostles i want to show who is the greatest of the apostles because these guys always used to fight see jesus was just announcing that i'm going to be crucified man the son of man is going to be killed and they said jesus please go 10 steps ahead and we will come and you know what they were discussing who should replace jesus who will be the next leader nobody was <laughs> caring about jesus poor jesus was walking right in the front can you imagine what would be the uh, condition of jesus the emotions and all that nobody bothered him 
and he's going to be killed. I'm saying I'm going to be killed and these guys are discussing who's going to replace him. That was the condition of the disciples. They were kind of kiddish and childish in their character and uh, Philip was no exception to that. And probably Philip had that thought in his mind that he wants to prove that he's the greatest. Therefore, let me buy that horse. Horses like today's uh, Rolls Royce, you know, Rolls Royce, the most expensive car or limo, limousine. Uh, uh, all these things are the most expensive cars or Lamborghini, Lamborghini and all these cars, right? Um, probably it was one of that sort. And, and he might have thought, okay, fine. He would offer his horse to Jesus and Jesus could ride in his horse. And wherever Jesus goes, what would they call? Hey, Jesus of Nazareth is coming on a horse. And the other guy would say, you know who gave this horse? It was Philip. And Philip's name would travel along with that, <laughs> along with the great son of God. Uh, and that was his intention so that he could gain more importance and pride. This was uh, the mindset. They were immature. They were, they were not yet saved completely, right? They were still old covenant people. They have not received the Holy Ghost yet. Okay. And uh, Jesus humbled him, saying that, you know, um, the, he called Andrew. Yeah. Uh, I forgot the meaning of Andrew. Me, and I think uh, it's something like, you know, dedicating everything he has, something like that. It's similar to that. And Andrew got everything he collected, all those uh, two fishes and five loaves he gave into the hands of Jesus and said that, Jesus, this is all I have. Take it. Take it. No calculation, nothing. Like Philip. He calculated with this 200 dinner, he's negotiating with Jesus. I, I will not be able to feed even one tenth of the crowd that he that is there. Therefore, he thought in his mind, oh, Jesus would say, fine, that is not enough. Let me look for some other rich man in the crowd and take some money from them and all that. He was trying to negotiate indirectly. Although he was honest, but he was uh, not fully innocent. But Jesus looked at Andrew and he taught a very good lesson to Philip that day. And after that, the scribes are saying, Philip, Philip's eyes or concentration were ne never went on that horse or anything like that. Uh, probably, you know, my strong assumption is on the same day, he called some 20 or 30 poor people and he distributed that money. Take it. That's why Philip was one of the greatest man of God. Yeah. One of the greatest apostles, one of the greatest disciples uh, that God, God could use him miraculously. Yeah. There's such wonders were not reported in the Bible other than Philip. Yeah, can you see that? He was caught up in his spirit. Elijah had that experience. But he, because the spirit would catch him up and leave him in the top of the mountain. They were searching mountains when Elijah was caught up in the uh, midair, uh, in, that, in the, the, the throne of fire, sorry, the chariot, fire chariot came and lifted him up. They were uh, thinking perhaps he would be somewhere in on, on top of some mountain and they were looking for him. So such an experience in the new covenant only Philip went through and the very reason was, uh, you know, Jesus humbled him and he accepted that. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for this course correction. And through Andrew, he was able to humble him. So today, what is your situation, my dear beloved brother, sister? You're thinking all is well with you. You're thinking you can even negotiate with God. Is that your condition? Yeah, please come to your senses. And there are so many humble brothers and sisters from whom we, you and I can learn our lessons, you know. You and I could literally learn from many people, even little children. You and I have a few things to learn from them. Why not? All right. A warm welcome to this series where we are been talking through the subject eschatology. Eschatology connects us with almost all the events that gets kicked off immediately after the second coming of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, you know, the saints being caught up in the midair and the... Uh, uh, and the, uh, what is that, uh, the um, tribulation period and so great tribulation and so many other events. We will walk you through one by one. In episode two, we had really thought to cover about the 14 events that had been fulfilled, which is really proving us that the end times are not near, but we are already in the end times. End times have begun. We are in the end of the age, which literally proves that any time, any moment, the twinkling of an eye, you will see the trumpet sounds and Jesus coming and taking his, that's called his rapture. And then immediately great tribulation gets kicked off and episode three, we want also cover about this great tribulation uh, to tell you that you know, 
what all events are likely to happen and uh, you, you and i really need to get a thorough understanding of what are the what are those events going to look like okay uh, once again a warm welcome and in a previous session it was lesson number 16 or 17 i don't know i think it's 16 not sure 16 or 17 the previous session we spoke uh, see we are talking through the basics and advanced concepts with, uh, with respect to eschatology we have not yet gone into the events that that are likely to get kicked off not likely will be kicked off immediately after the second coming and we will start up from the event goes in a sequence second coming the resurrection of the dead and the ju judgment and um, eternal happiness in the new order and uh, you know we are not going to talk about the armageddon battle the Com the, com the great commander of the army or commander of the great army jesus uh, we are not going to talk about that we'll skip that and we talk about eternal misery and punishment in hell uh, we are going to talk about that and we are going to talk about immortality and lastly the intermediate state right what is this intermediate state there is a concept theological folks will understand this right and uh, eschatology is derived from the greek um, Uh, word eschatos, which is nothing but the the last, the last, or the end times, the end of everything, something like that. So in a previous session, we were talking about eschatology kicks in the inter eschatology kicks off almost all the uh, important concepts. In fact, it touches all the important concepts like Christology, anthropology, soteriology, all these things we covered in our previous lessons. so in simple terms it talks about the true form of worship the true means of worship the true form of repentance and uh, what is reconciliation and uh, yeah uh, what is about leading the lost sheep uh, lost sheep or lost souls into salvation so many things right eschatology doesn't exist all by itself as a concept but it's the it's the it's the entitlement given under which so many other concepts are being encompassed that's why it's a very very heavy lifting subject that's why we took almost 16 17 hours to talk about only the basics and little advanced concepts re related to eschatology and we'll slowly get into the events in our previous session we spoke about the great apostasy yeah what will be the great uh, disciple in christ thinking to and how will a disciple in christ behave what will be the mark of a christian and what will be the behavioral pattern of a christian he will he or she will never get shaken in his mind regardless of any situation he also explained about this key difference between the joy and happiness joy is eternal happiness is temporary it's connected to a circumstance situation it's just like a passing cloud but joy regardless of any circumstance or troubles or problems sickness disease whatever you may go through it's not likely to even get compromised or shaken by one percentage that's the beauty okay and that's how the behavior of a great disciple in christ would be today we are going to talk a little bit about the tribulation and also about the revelation of antichrist you want to know more about antichrist and antichrist spirit we have done a beautiful episode which comes under the series groups of evil spirits that deceive the mankind episode number 8 we spoke for almost 47 or 50 hours you can say roughly yeah um it's available there in the playlist 50 hours of teaching almost only on antichrist spirit so we are going to touch at a high level about these two concept the concepts in today's session we will see how much over the time is going to permit we will do like and with that we will close uh, the the explanation of eschatology as a concept and then next lesson onwards we will be straight away getting into the events that are encompassed within eschatology in a chronological order right seven um sorry seven events you will be talking through the seven events that happens after second coming inclusive second coming seven events inclusive second coming and the episode number 2 we will be talking about 14 events that had already happened accomplished fulfilled before second coming 14 events before second coming six events after second coming second coming itself is an event okay are all clear 14 will be explained in second episode this episode will be explaining about six events that happens after second coming third episode great tribulation in detail we will explain pictorially are you all with me now turn your bible to matthew chapter 24 verses 21 to 30 will be our meditation verse we will describe a bit about tribulation 
right and in detail we will explain in episode number 3 you're all ready turn your bible matthew 24 21 to 30 okay for then verse number 21 for then there will be great tribulation such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time no no come on no that is like until this time come on no come on nor ever shall be if jesus is emphasizing something as uh, something like this that we will never be seeing a great tribulation many people you know they compare this great tribulation as you know uh, brother i have got this allergy and cold uh, just not leaving me uh, uh, brother i have this muscle spasm and aches in my uh, back a back aches and some people have even gastritis and they call it as you know it's a great tribulation brother and all that <laughs> i'm not saying any stomach ache is easy to bear even i go through it yeah when we get into acidity problem it's even worse so we all go through this right we are all living in this stressful world uh, is there anyone in this room that doesn't have gastritis or acidity some or other uh, you know moment at some or other point of time in lives when you take outside food for example your acid levels they change and they immediately you get acidity elder elder people you know they they prone to these kind of all you know problems and people call this kind of i'm not saying silly things okay any sickness is not easy to bear and god is compassionate or jesus is compassionate he always went and healed the sick people and then he spoke the gospel so i'm not at all saying that way but many people think that is great tribulation if jesus is emphatically telling you since the beginning of the world according to adam and eve the great tribulation is the separation from the love of god they lost their wonderful garden their home eden garden eden garden was shifted you know to paradise and uh, that itself is called as paradise and that place is called as zion which means it's a va- it's a it's a kind of a wilderness they came and saw the garden is not there anymore to them that's a great tribulation the pain that they went through yeah and uh, if you ask about noah the great tribulation is 120 years man that is just one sermon he had been preaching for 120 years tribulation my goodness you talk to joseph he will tell you know what it is to he was one of the great millionaires billionaire son grandson of abraham not a ordinary guy yeah no one of the richest fellows thinking rich and his he was the most beloved to his father spending time in the toilets cleaning toilets in the barracks and dungeon and people accusing him falsely and uh, letting into the pit with him which is uh, where there are serpents and scorpions could have been there god's grace it didn't bite him because god's plan has to be accomplished god will never allow any harm to come to you until his plan is met you ask him he will call that as a great tribulation uh like that you will see that but there is a clear indication given in genesis during the times of Moses, uh, joseph seven years of famine in the world it's just a symbolical representation of what the great tribulation could look like that's a simple sign of tribulation it's not to be equated to great tribulation can you imagine seven years of famine no rain no food no harvest uh, animals all dying due to starvation human beings dying due to starvation you want to purchase 1 kg rice you will have to travel some 700 miles can you imagine how do you travel 700 miles no animal is there alive no all animals are dead you got to walk by your feet probably you will eat one meal per day and then you will travel for example you know 15 20 days by foot resting and all that to to get what 1 kg rice <laughs> even that is not called as great tribulation i'm just giving you certain examples or huh? helping you realize these are the signs given and then onwards you re- you you fast forward the tape all the way you go to talk, you go to prophets like jeremiah isaiah and all that ezekiel uh, obadia mecca malachi zakaria all these guys you gather gang them up and you talk to them hey what was your experience they will say it was tribulation man it's pain you know what it is to be called as prophet god will wake you up and he will say that cook the food in you know man's dung and then he requested him therefore god changed it okay take cow's dung and cook it <laughs> this is the kind of experience and god will say eat one 
uh, whatever measure he will give and eat that and just lie down in this side and then he will wake up and he say lie down this side again for these many hours <laughs> you go talk to these guys these are all like signs god is giving you know god the father is not someone who's, who's so stupid to make these things uh, work it's, these are all sim- the every single um, what i say every single order from god to these prophets was a sign this is how israel will suffer this is how your enemies will come and devour this is how starvation happens this is and all these things he symbolically represents else what these guys are dumb head dumb head fellows how to communicate how to educate these guys can you imagine the struggle of our almighty father and therefore he had, he had chosen prophets like these guys and these prophets went through all sorts of pains and tribulation you ask them they will call that as the great tribulation man i only know what i went through what for you you are sitting and reading book of isaiah talk to i say i only know what it took me to write 66 books man you ask talk to jeremy i only know what it took to write 50 plus books plus i had been preserving the scroll and ultimately i got killed man you know what it is to get murdered i went through that pain talk to thomas he will tell you what it is to get stabbed and shed the blood for christ yeah he was he was quite old when he died he did a wonderful job in india and that's why india is saved India is very special to the Lord Jesus. One disciple he dedicated, na? No? All Indians. U.S. was not even discovered. U.S. was discovered only in 16th century by Columbus, Australia continent, and all that he only found. India is the ancient country. India, China also ancient country, but China name never came in Bible. India, uh, in the Book of Esther, India, Ethiopia, and all that is an ancient country. Very special country for Jesus. Very special country for God. Jesus loves India. Yeah, Jesus died for India. His blood cleanses all. It, his blood was shed for all Indian citizens, regardless of any religion, any uh, community you belong. You may hate Jesus, but Jesus loves you, man. I love you. You are my brother. You are my sister. My unbeliever brother, sister. You don't believe in Jesus? No problem. I will pray for you as long as I'm alive. I love you. I love you more than I love my fellow brethren and sisters in Christ. Why? Because they're already saved. There's nothing more to. I expect or that is done nothing more for me to love <laughs> you, you you are the ones whom i love the most because i care for you i care for your souls yeah like that you go on and on you talk to early age christians they'll tell you brother do you know what it is to be thrown live while you're living into the lions den this evening while i was walking i i go for regular walking in the evenings morning times are just not suiting me huh All of a sudden, two stray dogs—they just came almost very close with their teeth um, wide open, mouth wide open, and teeth visible. And what? My goodness, what sharp teeth they have! No, I was really—I—I st- <gasps> I, I just made a sigh without even. Yeah. Some of you listening to me have gone through experiences of dog chasing, <laughs> dogs chasing you. In India, every citizen would have gone through this experience at least once in their lifetime. If you are not. blessed are you if you had not blessed are you my dear beloved sister i have gone through couple of times uh, or maybe more than that and while you are being chased by the dog a noise will arise from the bottom of your stomach and it will flow out of your throat and that noise whoever is listening <laughs> <laughs> it will be so funny but when you go and make fun of that guy immediately after the incident he will slap on your face why because according to him he had gone through the great tribulation that moment was a great tribulation for him that was a tribulation moment for me for me i felt so when they came almost closer to me to bite me and then they recognized me because they, they these strays know me i love animals i love a lot i love them a lot um so they know me very well um, i'm not a bad guy <laughs> but they did not see my face closer enough they i was walking real fast and they thought i'm just coming to harm them or something and they came closer and they applied a brega oh, this guy are fine you are free to go <laughs> i said thank you boss <laughs> i started walking you know in india every street you need permission from government of india or police people or not you need permission from the stray dogs especially after 8 o'clock in the night <laughs> all right whatever that was a joke try to laugh you're all with me that was a tribulation moment for me but i'll tell you what my jesus tells me something like this for then there will be great tribulation such as not been since the beginning of the world until this time no nor ever shall be 
all of us go through painful moments that's why i just took some examples from the beginning of the world until my last ever where the stray dogs came closer to me and all that right all of us go through this painful moment and you ask them to describe in one word one title they'll say tribulation period that's it but that is nothing nothing that's what jesus says i'm going to talk about that in a different series so i don't want to spend much time yet i would want to preface the context set the context set the stage it's part of our eschatology it's part of eschatology right and we will touch that okay okay and verse number 22 matthew 24 22 and unless those days were shortened no flesh would be saved but for the elect sake those days will be shortened one said you are hearing the preachers or at least a lot of people who mock christianity where is your jesus man 2000 years you are not had come uh, that 2000 years itself god the father is saying it is a shortened time frame man perhaps his original plan was something like 10000 years but for his elect sake he is seeing all the people of god children of god being tortured harassed yeah one of the most harassed communities christianity do you know that you'll be surprised to hear that yeah top re- religious people who are you know there are other religious people you know i have seen you know sikh there is a religion called a sikh sikh religion and uh, the folks who are living in us you know how brutally they went through the harassments they're going to be ripped off by the beard and all that here uh, former indian prime minister Mah- uh, sorry uh, indra gandhi ji was uh, shot dead by couple of her escorts and they happen to be sick um uh, they're from that religion sick religion and uh, you know how much that community was brutally killed so many people died because of this two guys yeah i i don't want to get into this kind of discussions generally we don't pull these kind of ju- discussions and uh, uh, justify whether this is right or wrong no i'm not saying it's right or wrong forget it may god judge this any bloodshed any bloodshed in the eyes of god is not right so i will leave it there but you know what all these folks went through terrible terrible little children were killed their houses were burnt yeah regardless of any city they were in because congress was dominating there wasn't any other party congress was dominating they went and barged into their houses and killed them many people lost their shops businesses they just could not come out why i said this was um children of god are being harassed like that for their elect say god has already shortened the time frame yet it is now 2000 years that means uh, imagine if he had not shortened it could have been even more you know so don't mock saying the 2000 years 2000 years itself is a shortened time frame for its elect say and it will be even more shortened that's why i'm trying to tell you through eschatology what we are trying to prove here is the second coming of jesus could happen any moment 14 events before the second coming of jesus left us signs are already fulfilled man and there are six events that will take place after the second coming of jesus i will talk about that in this series right in the next series we will talk about that we will talk about the 14 events huh? verse number 23 then if anyone says to you look here is the christ or there do not believe it today you will see in the name of jesus what all is happening in this prison jesus says jesus walks jesus rises jesus descends jesus sleeps jesus is snoring anything funny names they keep and they start a church and people will the moment they see the name of jesus people will immediately get inside the church brother sister and membership and then immediately they loot your money then you will go and complain to the police and so many affairs are being filed these days first information report is being filed in these kind of churches cult speakers and some of the mega churches are not discounted either huh? my goodness it's almost like a motivational speech or it's a pep talk or it's like jokes and they have good communication presentation skills and they become pastors and 10000 plus people in their church and that's it man what nonsense and on the other side there are a lot i told you right one guy from siberia he declared himself as uh, uh, you know siberia was part of russia before soviet union before it got split in 1991 or 1990 i think so and this guy declared himself as christ and 650 acres of plot was gifted for him by a rich man 
and then he is finally spending his time in jail because he was a cult speaker and i appreciate russian government in india you know how many people they loot forget about christian uh, cult speakers other religion cult speakers also not too many are getting arrested i'm not blaming the government but i do not know what is the reason behind there's something wrong the russian government took a step and they immediately arrested him not immediately actually he had more than 50 60000 followers across the world and, and they understood that he is looting people's money and they put him in so uh, you will see very few people are being arrested here and there but you be aware of you be, you you better be aware and beware of these false prophets for false christ and false prof, false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders so as to deceive if possible even the elect even the christians elect means what the chosen children of god they will end up in the uh, you know footprints of sorcery or in the doorstep of black magician and mediums and spiritists and all that like how king saul landed he was one among the prophets he was the king of israel who led the, the children of israel he fought battles on god's behalf yeah he was a chosen king by god and the fellow ultimately was being fed by a sorcerer a witch witchcraft a witch fed her saying that the boss you eat else you will die and anyway he we was killed the next day and what kind of death you know he committed suicide uh, putting a spear he was uh, he was he was great in throwing spears and then he fallen on it and the spear went uh, and pierced and came on the other side yet he was not dead he was struggling in pain and one amalekite or somebody came in and he asked him you please behead me or something and he uh, he cut his head or something and he died what a terrible death you know people who are going behind such people you will go through such disasters if not here you will go there yeah, and discover in the white throne judgment day see i have told you beforehand jesus wants you important commandment I have told you beforehand Jesus tells you and me and to everyone that reads bible I love this verse Matthew 24 25 Matthew 24 25 remember it Matthew 24 25 See see means what focus here concentrate here look at me something like that <laughs> Look at me Jesus says I have told you beforehand Therefore if they say to you look he is in the desert do not go out or look a lot of people go for this pilgrimage tour no any religion for that matter that's why me is here this christian pastor is there and there and they built a special church in that hill top you go there oh brother you will feel the presence of god hey i'll tell you what there were a lot of people who were even worshiping jesus in the toilet in communist countries like china russia and all that i'll tell you what they are given more gifts of anointing of the holy ghost they have more fruit of the i mean the flavor and the fruit of the spirit more than you and me those that shall worship in air conditioning room and churches and mega churches and all that clapping hands and waving hands and all that such people will receive more power doesn't place doesn't matter piety for god matters how much you respect him and honor him that really matters and god only sees that he sees your heart and not your outward appearance how you dress or whatever one pastor was jailed in china and almost like 20 plus years he was he was he was kind of living his life in the septic tank where the human waste will be dumped man can you believe this <laughs> You think you will have more anointing in the powers of the Holy Ghost and gifts of the fruit and fr- fruit of the Spirit and all that, or him? Obviously, that brother. He is the true disciple in Christ. That is actually to be called as great tribulation. My goodness, can't imagine. If there is a little toilet leakage or what is that um, sewage uh, block or something like that, what stench you will find inside your home? My goodness, all of us would have gone through once or twice. I've gone through many times, and not that we expected, not that we wanted it, but it happens, no? <laughs> right? Then we put that powder, something like that, and then we clean, clean it up, and then my goodness, you should look at the color of that block when it comes out. It's terrible. And if you were to live there for twenty years, <laughs> therefore, if they say to you, "Look, he is there. He is in the desert. He is in the inner room." Do not believe it. 
Jesus is so very clear. Who is saying this book is complicated Bible? Tell me. Is it not so clear? Then there are so many fools and idiots and stupids going and getting fooled by these deceiving prophets. You deserve to be deceived. Go to hell. That's what Bible says. Because why? You are unrighteous. You are to be called as filthy. You are following someone who is filthy. You are also, you're also filthy. Revelation 22, 11 says. Verse 27 and 28. We will read. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so will also be the coming of the Son of Man be. In the twinkling of an, in the twinkling of an eye, Jesus will come and go. Lightning is like that, no? Thunder, light, lightning comes first. Light travels faster than sound. Hmm? Science. Lightning comes, you know, in the, in, the you know in, the fly, in the twinkling of an eye, Jesus will come and go. But every eye will witness. For wherever the sarcasms, there the eagles will be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Yeah, so many places, you know, sun is not it's just coming out. It's darkened and moon will not give its light. There are, you know, blood moon discovered. These are all the signs, signs. The stars will fall from heaven. No star had fallen yet, right? And the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And then all the tribes of the earth will mount. And then they will see the Son of Man coming, the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. All these guys know are saying, no God, it's all science, Big Bang Theory. Uh, my God is the biggest God. My God is only is the true God, this and that. And including Jews who pierce Jesus. And they still now, even now also, they call Jesus a criminal. He deserved that kind of death. They will all repent. They will all repent. Tribes of the earth will mourn. What a privilege. What a great opportunity we missed. It's too late. Why, the, why, why at that point of time? Why not now? Huh. That is the power of deception. My brother, my sister, unbelievers listening to me also. Please read the Bible. This is the book of evidence. This is a book of truth. This is not mythological book. Nobody dreamt a dream and started writing here. No, all prophecies here are fulfilled. These prophecies were not written after they were fulfilled. It was, it was written even thousands of, years, thousands of years ago before it was fulfilled, including the coming of Jesus. 4,000 years ago, before Jesus came, the prophecy was already given by Father in heaven. It was written down and as it was written, it happened. Therefore, what more evidences you need? Why are you not having faith? Why don't you trust in this great Yahweh God? He is the true God. He has no form. Yeah, he cannot be given the form as lizard, elephant, rat and monkey and donkey. All sorts of creations people are worshipping. Sun and moon and star and heaven. This and that. You know? The other day, I saw one stone at the corner of the street and Somebody had put in some turmeric over it and everyone who passes by is there bowing before that stone. What is this? What is this, guys? Will God live inside that stone? Tell me. God says, heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Are you insulting your God? Say you set up a similar stone and you engrave that your name of your father. For example, your father's name is Matthew. Huh? Oh, this is my father. You see how beautiful he looks. And you set up that stone at the corner of a street where a gutter runs and a ditch runs and all that. Your father will kick you out of your home, yeah, out of his home where you are living. And he will teach you such a lesson. He will cut your ration. Don't feed this guy every day. Give him meal once in two days. Huh? <laughs> if your earthly father itself is getting so worked up, can you imagine the anger? How, how dare you people insult? Giving him some form. And one, even, I'm not only blaming other people, other religion. I'm no one to blame. You just think through it, right? Even the Christians, they give so many forms. Uh, and one guy is asking me, one Christian brother is asking me, he was a nominal Christian, he's saying, we need a God in some form, no brother. How to just sit inside four walls? Oh God, you're here. I'm not able to believe that. That's why simply, small, small wooden statue, no? We made it and we kept it. Uh, and uh, see, uh, we have made it like Jesus only. I asked him, did you see Jesus that he was having a long beard, long hair and this and that? Boss, he was so beautiful. His eyes are like eyes of dove and um, milky white skin and all those things. Uh, then ultimately he was bet and bruised. 
tree, bet worse than a beast that there was no form or comeliness left in him. It was a true incident. The Jews went and examined, was this the Jesus whom we handed over? Because he was so handsome. And they brought him like a dog and he died for you. And did you see that Jesus? If you were to engrave, you, could, you should engrave that Jesus who was dragged like a dog. Huh? You, why you are not able to engrave? Well, so It will be so horrifying. Children will get scared, no brother. Brother, he died for you like a dog. You are not even able to imagine his image that was tarnished and no form or comeliness in, 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 in it that he was to be called as a human being. And uh, you give some image and you are worshipping. Is this the true form of worship? No, it is not. That's exactly what you are. You and I are supposed to think. Actually, my time is up, but I'll just cover a couple of more verses from Second Thessalonians chapter two, verse uh, uh, nine to twelve. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. See, he's connecting the dots with Matthew twenty-four eleven to twenty. Whatever we discussed. Who Paul the Apostle writes this, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, people who want to perish go after deceiving preachers, right? Go after deceptions. <laughs> but that's not the will of God. God will really be saddened in his heart if you do that. Because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Love of the truth they reject. And the truth is nothing but the word of God. And you are connected in the word of God. The Holy Spirit is given to you for free. And he leads you from the scriptures. And he will give you powers accordingly. He will give you the faith to resist the devil. What do you mean? Powers means what? You know, you will send, bring fire from heaven and burn the devil or something like that. No, faith. Faith is the, you know, the powerful weapon to resist the devil. And for this reason, God will send strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness, God himself will hand you over to Satan. I told this before also in, the, in this series only we have discussed this. Yeah, I hope you understood the seriousness as how, you know, in the last days you and I could be deceived. We got, we, we got to be really careful. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful time of fellowship. We appreciate your grace and mercy. Thank you for explaining very clearly to us the concept of <clears throat> eschatology, Father. And in the upcoming sessions, we want to talk about those six events or seven events, including the second coming. Please guide us and help us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please subscribe to our channel and do not miss on any videos. It's my humble request. If you, you, you miss on something, you won't get it back. These are truly the last days. Where is the time in the world you don't have? Share with your share these channel details with your friends, relatives, whomever you know, and bring everyone, lead them into salvation. Bring everyone, every lost soul into salvation. That's your responsibility, my duty, and your responsibility. All of us are in this together. And continue to remember me and our ministries in your prayers. Thank you for your time. God bless.